Hey everyone, welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. This is going to be a kind of a modified buyer's guide on the Tamiya Hornet Watanabe edition. I'm not going to go that into detail when it comes to the Hornet part of this car because we have done a buyer's guide on the Hornet. What I want to talk about is what differentiates this Hornet from this Hornet. First things first, you can see that it doesn't really have the paint scheme of a Hornet. The paint scheme it does have reflects a particular shoe that Jun Watanabe, who is a Japanese designer, had created. When I talk about the cosmetics on this car, I can only talk about this subjectively. And to me, I think this car is an absolute masterpiece. The moment I saw this thing, I had to have it. When I first found it, it was only available in Japan as well as the UK. The UK got individually numbered versions of these. I want to say 1 to 200 or 250 or something around there. This is a Japanese version, which was a lot more available and they were never sold in the US directly, but they were eventually imported. And I found this guy on eBay. For a while there, they were selling at about the same price as the Hornet, but toward the end of the vehicle's life, they were starting to liquidate them. So I picked up two more new inbox kits for 70 or $80 a pop because nobody wanted them. I can't imagine why. I think the fact that it has these pink tires is just magnificent. They also came with black rims, which was very unique to the Hornet at the time. And the elephant in the room, of course, is going to be the injection molded plastic, all in this incredibly vivid purple. They didn't stop there. You have the spindles as well as the ball cups also done in pink. You've got pink lug nuts, white springs. Again, at the rear, these are white springs. So the details on this car is really what set it apart. It wasn't just a recolor of the chassis. It was a very thoughtful redesign of the vehicle. Even in terms of the livery, it's not like they just did the body in this polka dot paint scheme. No, no, no. They also added some decals here at the bottom to tie in this pink. And this is a fade. If I pull this closer, you can see the stippling pattern on it. And from a bit of a distance, you can see that this pattern slowly blends in with the pink and the purple here on the rear fender. What I want to talk about next, obviously, is going to be how you make the car look like this, because I think it's pretty important. Unboxing this guy. We can see that we have some decals, and this is a considerable decal sheet. Looking at this sheet, we can see that we have all the spots that are strategically placed here. But if you look closer, you can see that it has this white outline. These are designed to place the decals in large swatches, not as individual dots, but basically you follow the white cutout, peel the entire thing off and paste it down, black dot and transparent all in one. The roll cage has a black decal, and the pink to purple fade also has this decal as shown. This is the decal on the side of the chassis, and this is the one here on the front, which I didn't point out, but there it is. It even has a cowling decal in black. What I wanted to show very quickly was my spent decal sheet. Here you can see that the roll bar, the cowling, and the rear fender flares all have the decals still present. And that is because I could not bear to put a decal on these. These are all just painted. If you get a little bit closer, you can see the fade from the pink to the purple. Again, these are all painted in black and as are the roll cage. The dots are also individually placed. If I come a little bit closer, you can see the perimeter of the dot. This was surprisingly easy to do. I just kind of cut them out real quick and pasted them down as close as I could get them. And I found this to be a little nicer because it didn't cover all the white in that texture, which I really wasn't a huge fan of. Something that's incredibly cool about the Watanabe Hornet is the manual. It has been printed in purple. I mean, just a really neat little detail. It is otherwise a standard Hornet manual. Of course, it does have additional printing up there to show that it is the Jun Watanabe edition. And as you get toward the end, you can see that it uniquely tells you here how to decal up the car. Again, a really nice little addition to what could have just been a regular black printed manual. You are going to see the tires here in this really nice pink. 
So not shown in the box are a set of black tires and white rims. This is so that you could either install the pink tires or the black tires with the black rims or the pink tires on the white rims or whatever option that you wanted. Save the pink tires and drive the black ones and on and on. So that was kind of cool that it had that extra. Your driver is going to be in the standard white, but for the most part, all the other molded parts, as you can see here, are all done in this purple. The rim bag and the absolutely magnificent chassis in purple. Here are your spindles in pink. Your servo saver is still going to be in the gray plastic. And it does also have the Jun Watanabe printing here on the box divider. So it is a unique box with unique prints and a lot of interesting things here that normally I wouldn't really care much about. But in this case here, it is such a remarkable special edition that I, I just had to have it. Looking a little closer at the car, these are the exact same tires that you would find on the regular Hornet, just molded in pink. These have started to get this little weird white stuff on them. If I wipe them down with a little bit of silicone, they clean right up. The car usually sits in a little display case, although I do run the car. You can see that the tires have got a little bit of dirt on them. Uh, it is very lightly run. As you can see, the underbelly is still like new, but my kids happen to love the look of this car. So does my wife. And personally, I think it looks just adorable and hilarious driving around. Taking the body off, and there's absolutely no difference here. This is just a Hornet. Um, I added the pink antenna. This is not how it's supposed to come. I think it has a regular clear antenna. The first thing that's going to jump out to you is the mechanical speed control. Please note that this car doesn't even come with a mechanical speed control. I made this just for cosmetics as well as the resistor mount in this pink color. So it's only done just for fun. I'm going to ignore the electronics on this car because I do want to do a my car series but the car does have an electronic speed control and in all other respects is just a hornet only one that has become significantly brighter than the original version let's go ahead and take this little guy for a spin but just note that it's going to be a pretty boring spin uh, again i don't really beat up on this car i just kind of wanted to look this pretty and drive around delicately because obviously it is kind of a rare little specimen so Let's drive it a little bit and see how it goes. Get it. 
no surprise that this car is just a Hornet. It behaves exactly like when, in fact, it behaves a lot more like a Hornet than a lot of my cars do because this is the only vehicle I own that doesn't have any Ampro upgrades. And the fact of the matter is, I kind of want to leave this thing stock, although I have been thinking about doing the battery door in pink, and I don't know, we'll see. Maybe I'll just leave this guy alone. The question, of course, is do you want one? If you are a Tamiya collector, then it's going to be hard-pressed to pass on this car unless you hate the look of it. And when this came out, there were so many people that thought it was just a travesty. And I find that a little bit odd because the car in general is so playful that this kind of goofy and fun paint job really lends itself perfectly to that. So I'm, I was always blown away that people didn't like this paint job. Again, it is very pink and very purple and not everybody may enjoy those colors. So I can't see that. But if you are a Tamiya collector, especially one into early to me, a car is like the Hornet, the Grasshopper, the Frog. One of these guys has got to be parked on yourself. In terms of locating one, I have not seen one on eBay in quite a long time. I have not looked on eBay overseas or in Japan. I'm sure they're more likely to find them elsewhere where they were sold in greater numbers. Most likely, you might want to try and get your hands on a UK version of this car because, again, those are all individually numbered, whereas the Japanese ones, at least to my recollection, were not. Although you probably would have better luck finding one in Japan. Most likely you're going to find one in pretty darn good shape. I've not really seen many of these things being used and abused given their rarity, but if you are looking to buy one of these to bash it, I mean you can do whatever you want with your money, but this is going to be one of those cars that appreciates dramatically over time. They were so hard to find, and I think over the years they're going to be more and more sought after because this is really one of the few times where a special edition of a Tamiya came out so uniquely colored, at least in such great numbers. I know that in Japan, oftentimes you could find rare parts and neon colors, but in this case here, it's the entire car and livery that's all very, very unique and specific. So I personally don't think this would make a very good basher because again, it is just the Hornet. So if you want to beat up on a Hornet, get a cheap Hornet. This thing here is again it's hard for me to park it on a shelf so the car is driven but it is driven lightly and gently because i i, I do want to keep it looking well fabulous folks i hope you enjoyed the video i will follow this up pretty soon with a my car series to talk a little bit about the car and i hope you found this video informative thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you soon